We'll call to order the regularly scheduled meeting for the Minot City Council order. Uh, before we begin, uh, for those of you in the audience and on the uh, council, please give yourself one to do. Put them to mute or vibrate. Um, roll call. Jansen? Here. Olson? Here. Adamula? Here. Sitma? Here. Grace? Here. Wolski? Here. Barney? Here. We're two pledge allegiance. Anybody in the audience that cares to comment on this public hearing? Is there anybody here to comment on this public hearing? Third time, anybody here to comment on this public hearing? Alderman Chancellor? Seconded by SIPMA. Discussion? Discussion amongst the council. Call the roll. Stanford? Yes. Olson? Yes. 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 Y
and it doesn't show up in a property search as belonging to anybody. So what this has to do with my client is that uh, he would like to attach it to his property and it would make sense with the adjoining property lines around it uh, that it would be and uh, we have a buyer for the property but the buyer wants to wait till we find out what's going on with this unknown property. I do have a, uh, I, I am planning on being at the next uh, zoning, uh, zoning meeting, uh, but I just would really like to be able to go into it with the city being able to define who owns the property. And that's all I'm here for today, is just to, to mention that. I don't know again what I should do with the Bring that up to me, Mr. Tim. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna give that to the city manager and we'll, we'll dig into it to see if we can figure that out for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tim. Is there anybody else who wishes to address the council on any item not on tonight's agenda? Okay, seeing no one. Uh, Mayor's report, I have a brief report for you this evening. <clears throat> on a sad note, I'm sure all of you have heard that uh, former Mayor Orland Bach has passed away. His, uh, his funeral will be on Thursday at one o'clock at Our Lady of Grace. Um, he was a, a former mayor, as we all know, a wonderful man, and uh, the community will sorely miss his, his leadership, and uh, he's made a tremendous impact on our community. <coughs> Excuse me. November 9th, I spoke at the CLI graduation sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce. Also that day, I uh, did the Burdick Expressway ribbon cutting over by the uh, Zoo. November 15th, uh, we met with local, le local legislators on the Energy Development and Transmission Committee, uh, getting ready for the meeting the following week. Uh, November 16th, I uh, welcomed the International Economic Development Council, and also that evening, I chaired the uh, Mayor's Committee on Addiction. So November 18th to the 28th, I was on vacation when I got bronchitis. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like cough. November 29th, we hosted the um, the city hosted the North Dakota Energy Development and Transfer Committee. This was a very important meeting for our community, and um, it went off exceptionally well. It was a great opportunity for the city of Minot to talk directly with legislators on why Minot deserves not only to be a hub city, but uh, the importance that we uh, serve within the Bakken. A number of people uh, served on that committee and helped put it together. Um, and I want to recognize a few of them. I know Tom's going to recognize some more afterward. <coughs> I want to recognize Stephanie Hopper from MADC, uh, John McMartin from the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Dr. Mark Vollmer from uh, Minot Public Schools, Sheriff Bob Barner uh, from uh, Ward County, Dave Lakefield, the city finance director, Lance Meyer, the city engineer, Dan Jonason, the public works director, uh, Chief Lerman, uh, fire chief, uh, Rick Feltner, the airport director, Tom Berry, the city manager. I want to thank all of them for the hard work they put in. It was weeks and weeks and weeks of preparation, and I think they just did an outstanding job. So I want to thank them all for that. On November 30th, uh, Burlington Northern uh, made an announcement of the Minot Industrial Park being BNSF certified. Uh, that was a major accomplishment for the community and the industrial park. And I want to again recognize Mrs. Colford and all the hard work that she did in uh, getting that cert making that certification a reality. <clears throat> this morning, I, or this afternoon, I met with Judith Roberts on zoning issues related to the Silver Living Home for Women. Uh, I anticipate uh, more meetings with them as we try to uh, work through the, uh, the, the, the red tape, for lack of a better term, on uh, providing a sober living home for women in our community. Obviously, this goes hand in hand with uh, my committee on addiction, so uh, uh, those meetings will continue. 
<coughs> in January, with the uh, blessings of Alderman Strait and Alderman Wilson, we're going to be scheduling a special city council meeting uh, with the express purpose of dealing with our two animal uh, ad hoc committees. We thought it better to uh, try to maybe specialize a, a council meeting uh, uh, where we only focus on that so we don't go so late, but I anticipate that's going to be a fairly long and involved meeting. Uh, sometime in January in the evening so uh, we can get the, the most people here to uh, give us their input as possible. Um, last item I have are appointments that should be in front of you. Here are all your appointments. Seconded. Seconded by uh, discussion. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Uh, do you have the December City Manager report for you? We'll just jump right in with some important dates. I uh, wanted to remind everyone in the public and, and uh, yourselves as well that we have two meetings this month on the gathering space. Uh, the two public meetings are going to be held on December 5th at 6 p.m. in the auditorium, uh, room 301, and also on December the 18th at 6 p.m. in auditorium room 301. So we encourage everybody from the community to attend those. Uh, and we did have to move that second meeting to, to avoid conflict uh, in downtown with the holiday train, so we're trying to get that worked out. Uh, we do have the airport master plan meeting. We scheduled from 1.30 to 3.30 in the baggage claim area on the 7th and 6th. The Source River Joint Board is going to meet on the 7th uh, in Bismarck. Uh, State Water Commission on December 8th in Bismarck as well. And then uh, just a reminder, of course, with the holidays, the city offices will be closed on December 25th and 26th, as well as New Year's Eve, January 1st. Uh, I just want to back up just a real quick second. Also, let everyone know, because of the uh, holiday season, uh, the committee of the whole meeting is going to be on January the 2nd and January the 3rd with City Council, not the first Monday, of course, but the second Monday in January. So that's a little bit different than most of our other meetings. Okay, really quickly, just wanted to update you. Uh, most of you are aware of uh, the uh, bidding that we've done for the first three phases of the flood control projects. The phase one bid, which is the fourth avenue bid, uh, came in $3 million less than the first time we bid it. This is, again, uh, well, we had to bid the project twice, and fortunately, the second bid came in another $3, or excuse me, $3 million less than the first bid bringing the total difference to about $15 million for phase one under the engineer's estimate, which is exciting news for us. Phase two and three, which is the Napa Valley Forest Road, uh, portions of the project. The current low bid was about $35.7 million, and the, uh, the engineer's estimate was about $6 million more than that. So Wagner Construction submitted the low bid on phase two and three. Park Construction submitted the low bid on phase one. Essentially, all bids are going to be awarded after our permit approvals come from the State Water Commission and the United States Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, but fortunately, so far, with these three bids, we've been able to achieve about a $21 million savings over engineers' estimate. Of course, that money is going to be put to continuing these projects uh, uh, as we move forward and protecting as much of the city as we can with the resources that we have available. Uh, moving forward, the Army Corps of Engineer Feasibility Study for Phase 4, this is the Maple Diversion, uh, has been posted for public review. The window ended in November 30th, and the first public input meeting was held on the 16th uh, at the uh, auditorium. So uh, Burlington Northern's portion of the flood protection is in, is in design right now. It's almost complete at 90%, so we're excited about that too. We do hope to get the, the results of the feasibility study and all the public comments uh, back here shortly from the United States uh, Army Corps of Engineers so we can continue on with that important piece of uh, the project. Next, we'll talk about the uh, National Disaster Resilience uh, Competition uh, funds that we've been uh, enjoying. Give you a couple updates here. Uh, first of all, the downtown gathering place. I've already 
mention to you the two meetings. Uh, last uh, week, the Committee of the Whole, you all looked at the scoring criteria. That's up for your consideration uh, to formally adopt this evening as well. So that's exciting. Uh, property acquisitions, uh, we've had a couple breakthroughs, uh, two of which you'll look at this evening. This is a settlement with the Home Sweet Home uh, property as well as the property. So uh, both of those are in front of you tonight for, for we close on 11. With regard to affordable housing, two proposals were received for the single family resilient neighborhood RFP and they're currently being reviewed uh, and processed. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about policies and procedures with improvements in regard to gap financing. Uh, these policies will be presented to the city council next month. Uh, one proposal was received for the multifamily uh, request for proposals, uh, but unfortunately it was withdrawn. So we're going to be looking at that RFP and uh, revising it and then letting it out again to the public for, uh, for additional uh, requests. <clears throat> I did want to let you know that we did send out the waiver for the uh, NDR project for City Hall relocation. This is important to us because as you may know that although we've got uh, several million dollars set aside for uh, the relocation of City Hall, uh, we were told that we could not begin that project until we made substantial progress on other components of the, uh, the NDR program. And so we feel that we are at that point, we've been consulting with uh, HUD on this, and we've put together, I think, is a very strong case for allowing us to access those funds which have been set aside for the City Hall relocation. So that's been submitted, and we are just, uh, you know, I don't know how long it'll take for us to get through this process. It could be just a couple months. It could be a greater part of six months. but. We're going to continue to try to move this forward so that we can get this other aspect of, uh, of the important work uh, carried on. Moving forward, and I won't go into this with too much detail because the mayor did touch on it, but, uh, and many of you were at the event, but we did host uh, an economic development forum. Uh, and uh, this, we brought in members from the Economic Development Council that, uh, that uh, had come in and provided a two-day training and workshop um, which is the start of several activities which are going to be occurring as part of a partnership between the city and the Minot Area Development Corporation. So I want to thank uh, Stephanie uh, Hoffert for her uh, leadership on this and uh, helping to host and put this together for us. Uh, it, was, it was a really well attended event. Typically you, you don't get a whole lot of folks that attend these things. Maybe you're 20, 30 from a, from a community our size. We had about 50 participants, which is really great. And there was great dialogue, too, by the way, in and around uh, what we could be doing and, and um, what's worked well and, and what maybe we want to consider going forward in and around the world of uh, economic development. So that was really, really beneficial for us. Just quickly want to update you on the parking garage. As you all know, essentially the tower crane has been removed. I, I think I reported on that last time. Uh, with that, we are allowed to move forward now in closing out the, the the city's portion of the construction of the two ramps. So that's going to take us about a month or two as we work through punch list items and reconcile invoices and, and uh, various work that needs to be done. So we are hopeful that in the next month to maybe six weeks, we're able to close out fully our portion of that project and, and essentially be done with it. Uh, there is a big meeting, about a four hour meeting that's going to occur on December 11th with myself, some of the key staff members, and then the Cypress representatives to talk about how we can advance uh, this, the next stage of these projects moving forward. Uh, so we are looking at um, uh, this more of a planning meeting with uh, the two organizations to, to attempt to try to, to try to move this project along. I did want to offer a correction. Last time I gave my report to you um, last month, I mentioned to you that we expected for Cyprus to pay in full all of the outstanding uh, amounts in rent and whatnot that was due. I mentioned to you that uh, there was a outstanding balance of $255,000 that was due in rent uh, on October 15th that, that 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 was not paid and we immediately issued a notice of default and demand for cure and I had mentioned at the meeting uh, last council meeting that they were going to come in and pay that in full I misunderstood uh, what they meant to or what I meant to say or misunderstood was that they were going to come in and pay the interest on the last payment that was late in full which they did do uh, so that means that we are still now um, in default with the 255000 that's owed for this rent due on October 15th, plus accruing interest daily. So I apologize for that misunderstanding and, and therefore miscommunication to you, but I wanted to get that corrected. 
Um, <clears throat> I won't go into too much detail here about the legislative outreach we've done, other than to say uh, that I do feel that the city of Minot has uh, made a very, very good case for continuing um, to uh, make its place for hub city funding. Uh, the mayor touched on this briefly, so I won't go into too much detail, but I think all the messages and the themes that we intended for uh, the legislative committee to hear uh, got carried across loud and clear and I'm pretty excited to, to say that uh, the feedback that I received personally uh, from many of the legislators on the committee as well as our local area legislators not part of the committee was extremely positive so I'm, I'm grateful and there are a lot of folks that we have to thank you for this the mayor mentioned a number of uh, individuals that were pretty critical in the, the putting together of all of this you now this, this was an effort of course by not just city staff members, but members throughout our community and with different uh, organizations, businesses, and, and whatnot. Here's just a few on the screen here, and I, I won't go through the time to read them all off, but I am very, very grateful, um, particularly for the, for the petroleum businesses that helped us, uh, helped us tell the story to the, to the legislative committee that we are truly impacted by and are a major player when it comes to what's going on in, in oil and natural gas uh, production out west. In addition to those organizations, um, we had uh, several key local area legislators that, uh, that volunteered uh, four hours of their time to come in and speak with the staff in helping to set up this meeting. That occurred on November the 15th, and I'm very grateful to our local area legislators for, for attending and for providing very constructive feedback, which I think helped strengthen the reports uh, and the information that we were sharing. Finally, we had several presenters. The mayor mentioned most of these presenters. I did want to add uh, Chief Jason Olson, our police chief, who was also instrumental as well as all the rest of the staff here. And then lastly, you know, it takes, it takes a lot of people to pull this off, and we had a lot of people internally uh, and externally to our organization that helped pull this off. And, and here are the names of many folks that, that you might not first think were contributors to this, but were absolutely instrumental in helping to pull this off. Uh, so I want to thank all of them as well. Moving forward, I did remind you, or I think I did introduce last month, that we are going to have a department head retreat on December the 13th uh, for several reasons. Uh, obviously, some of the big reasons are to improve team building and to also imp improve our strategic and operational aspects of the organization and really to tee up this idea of you know, what we're going to be able to kind of discuss and, and move forward. In the, in the way of um, strategic planning and, and economic development and other sorts of things, and to provide a source of information that would ultimately feed into a uh, council retreat, which you've, you've all been talking about. Um, just keep in mind, on December 13th, uh, staff, you know, department heads might be difficult to reach, um, but they'll, you know, they'll have uh, their seconds in command uh, watching over their departments, but I uh, just want to make sure everyone knew that that was going to be taking place. Lastly, I wanted to, I sort of feel like I need to begin updating you on all the council directives that you've provided over the last several months. This list continues to grow. I'm getting concerned that the list is getting large and the time is getting short and the resources are few and far between. So uh, we are going to have to prioritize these various tasks. Uh, I've tried to put together at least a, a best guess as it relates to the various tasks what our anticipated start date is and what our completion dates at least targeted are meant to be. This will be uh, adjusted probably monthly, but I, I do feel like there's so much uh, that we need to kind of keep a list of this and keep you up to, up to date on all of these various aspects. So I won't go through all of this stuff. It's in your packet uh, if you, if you want to look at it. But uh, essentially, we, we do have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, and I know that this is important work to you. Um, but these are all new tasks that, uh, that are in addition to our standard jobs, and uh, so we'll try to work them in as, as well as we can along the way. With that, I'm done. Oh, sorry, I have community engagement uh, announcement again. This is just a reminder of the State of the City address that we're going to try to, uh, to pull off as a first for our community. Uh, it looks like maybe early February. I'm looking at February 1st or February 8th. We'd like to keep it on a Thursday. We are looking at venues right now, and uh, that, of course, that availability of various venues is going to dictate exactly when that date is. Um, but uh, we'll have a lot more detail, I think, to share with you in the January meeting. So uh, this is really just a, a placeholder reminder at this point in time. With that, I'll close um, and uh, invite any questions you might have. Any questions for uh, Mr. Berry? Uh, Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Tom. Uh, <clears throat> 
topic has come up at, at past meetings here and there, and I think you gave a presentation on it maybe this spring, but uh, with phase one flood protection moving forward, have we, we made any additional plans with the Walter Street House, uh, or uh, do we have any direction there? Um, there's no direction at this point in time. Uh, there's some information that I've asked the staff to pull together on the history of the decision making that went through uh, the city council's or the past city council's decision to acquire the Walters House. That information is being pulled together and at some point we owe you more information about that kind of sharing what's gone on, what the history and the thinking was. Uh, essentially it's it's available for a number of different purposes and I think what we what we need to do as a staff is bring that back to you and share with you what that thinking was and then and then get some feedback from you as, as it relates to what we should do with the with the property if we want to continue to hold it if we want to sell it if we want to turn it into something um, there isn't really from what I can tell so far any kind of uh, definitive vision just a bunch of options that are available for the facility okay. Any other questions for Mr. Berry? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, the City Attorney's Report, Mrs. Hendershot. Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, I submitted a written report. I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions for the City Attorney? Any questions? Well, seeing none. Item number 10 is considered a report of the Planning Commission. Motion, Alderman yeah. Chancer. I move the five items. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Sipmo. Discussion. What this means for those of you in the audience is that all, <coughs> excuse me, all five of these items will be passed as they came out of the Planning Commission. If you disagree with any of those decisions and you want to uh, appeal directly to the council, now is your opportunity. Let us know which one of those items you wish to uh, have pulled, and we'll pull it for consideration. Seeing no one, any discussion amongst the council? Call the roll. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Quadribula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Motion passes. Um, item number 11 is considered the report of the Committee <coughs> of the Whole. There were 16 items on that agenda. Is there a motion? Mayor, I would move 1 through 10, number 12, and 14 through 16, so pulling 11 and 13. 11 and 13 is pulled for further discussion. Any other items? Pull 12. Pull 12. 14 as well, Mayor. And 14. <clears throat> Again, for those of you in the audience, that means all the items 1 through 10 and 15 and 16 will be passed as they came out of the Committee of the Whole. Uh, items 11, 12, 13, and 14 will be addressed individually for consideration. If there's anything else you'd like up there to be pulled, let me know and we'll do that. Seeing no one, uh, call the roll. Sitma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Padragula? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, item number 11 is Northbridge Villa's second edition development and agreement. I have a motion. Mr. Mayor, I would move the item with a recommendation of option number three that was laid out before us in the handout for the asphalt emulsion, I believe, is what we're looking for for a recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Strait. <coughs> Discussion? Alderman Wolski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, I appreciate Lance delivering the information. Uh, obviously, the, the number that, that we're looking at today with regards to uh, kind of clarifying and, and improving this uh, pipe is, is a lot lower than, than we had originally thought last week. Um, in its present form, I don't think I'm going to be able to support this motion. I think uh, the, the points Alderman Strait made last week uh, uh, are, are the most compelling for me at this point in the sense that this was uh, this was frankly, our mistake four years ago. I think it's inappropriate for, for us to extend this obligation to the next property owner. So I'm going to be opposing at this point. Further discussion? Alderman Padugula? Could we have the city engineer talk about these three options? Mr. Meyer, where are you? There you are. <coughs> Alderman Padugula, would you like to ask a specific question or uh, just have him explain it? Well, if you could have him explain it and also uh, offer recommendation if you would so choose. 
Certainly, Mr. Mayor, Alderman Quadragula. Basically, what I did is I researched some materials, um, like a uh, emulsified asphalt material that you can buy online. This material is, is rated for use on, uh, on metal, and uh, it's about $100 per five-gallon bucket. And so I put some hours on there for cleaning the pipe and uh, preparing it and then applying it with either a, a sprayer or just a good old mop. But uh, it should work for, uh, for what we're looking at. You know, one thing I, I did want to mention briefly is when this pipe was, was first installed, you know, the city did review that plan and it's supposed to be a concrete pipe. Uh, Mr. Zimmerman reported uh, last week that his the original project manager knew that he couldn't get a concrete pipe, so they went and found a steel pipe. But at no time did they tell the city Minot that they were going to change the plan. Uh, the consultant engineer that they had on at the time, not their uh, current one, failed to mention that they were switching the pipe. And I guess, yeah, at the very end we missed it, but there were several opportunities along the way for the developer to, to let us know that there was a problem. We could work through that. And now here we are at the end, and we have a problem. And, want to fall in the city to get fixed. So I think in this regard, what we've come up with was something that essentially uh, meets everyone halfway. Alderman Patrick Gould. Following up on that, uh, could you briefly explain the difference between the three alternatives and which one, if any, you're recommending? I certainly can. Uh, option one would be our traditional concrete storm sewer pipe. That's the preferred material that the city of Minot uses on all storm sewers. Option number two is a uh, it's a newer method. It's basically what it is. It's a uh, type of PVC resin um, sock, if you will, and it goes <laughs> inside the pipe. It's a liner, and then they use uh, ultraviolet radiation. Um, some liners will use hot water, and it'll cure that pipe in place, and it basically turns the, uh, the exterior pipe into a, uh, a liner, and then the interior becomes like a PVC lined pipe. Uh, it's good stuff. It can be used in certain situations, um, but it's it's very expensive. You'll see that traditionally, maybe like in uh, sanitary sewer replacements, where you don't want to rip up the street. And then the third option was the one that I I had spec out. Do you ex um, what kind of longevity figures are there for these three? I think last time you told us that concrete pipe is 50 plus years. What are the other two estimated at? <laughs> Concrete pipe will, under good conditions, will last probably 75 years plus. Um, the cured in place pipe is, is almost indefinite because it's essentially, it, it turns it into a PVC or a plastic pipe. And then the, the third option will, will add years of life onto the, uh, the steel pipe that we have. Basically, it's, it's coated on the inside with a material that will resist the, for, or the uh, corrosion properties of, of some of the water and the, uh, the sediment that goes through the pipe. Thank you. Further questions, Mr. Mayor, while he's up here? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Further discussion from the council? Further discussion? Call the roll. Sitma? Yes. Strait? No. Wolski? No. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Quadragula? <coughs> Motion passes. Uh, item number 12 is the 2018 City Council schedule. Do you have a motion? I move, Mr. Mayor. Move. Second. Moved by Janser, seconded by Strait. Discussion? Alderman Olson. <coughs> I did vote to approve this last week, um, and I did it with a little bit of hesitancy because I feel like we've lost some diversity in, in, in shrinking the size of our council. And we had an opportunity last week to add some input from some residents by splitting this council into two different committees and, and adding some different input. Um, that wasn't the option that was, that was chosen. And I, I just wanted to say that I thought that it was unfortunate because I do really rely on input from residents. And I think that with their input and expertise, we could have had a little broader perspective on some different issues. Um, in particular, I would like to see some more women serving. Um, I'm part of a group called Women Lead, Women Run, and we've kind of looked at some of the challenges that women face when looking at public office. Um, time is one of them. There's a big time commitment up here when the Committee of the Whole serves in full in its entirety at both meetings. So 
um, with those things, I just I feel like I I can't support this at this time. Further discussion. <clears throat> Further discussion? Call the roll. Janser? Yes. Olson? No. Padrigula? Yes. Sigma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Motion passes. Item number 13 is the authorization allocation number one substantial amendment to buy blighted properties and to create small business loan program. Mr. Mayor, I would move the item as well. Moved by Sitma, seconded by Straight. Discussion? Alderman Sitma. Mr. Mayor, I pulled this just for uh, more of a comment. I don't know if Mr. Zakian is here tonight or not. I didn't see anything in the uh, audience, but just more so from an outreach from the Service Basin Planning Council that they have a very similar loan program that is built around the small business and just wanted more so to, I think, provide a little bit of direction for Mr. Zakian as well to make sure that we're not duplicating something that's already out there and if there's something that can be benefited to them as well through this program that fits within the NDR guidelines that he should have explore that. Good point. Uh, Mr. Berry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Alderman Sitma, thank you very much for that. We'll make sure, uh, well, first of all, Mr. Zakian is out uh, for the weekend, so I apologize he couldn't be here this, uh, this week. He is enjoying his uh, wedding anniversary with his wife back in New York. So stuck with me um, <laughs> essentially we will make sure that he gets that message I also wanted to just clarify that uh, your motion tonight and any approvals that may come with it uh, essentially I wanted to clarify maybe a misconception that came in the committee <coughs> whole, and that is I want to make sure that the, the council understands that we will not be using eminent domain to acquire zombie homes with this funding and that may have been lost in the conversation <coughs> last week uh, there, are, there are significant reasons for that. I can go into if you'd like, but uh, essentially we are proposing to use the involuntary uh, process for other reasons, but I didn't want to mislead the community or the council in, by believing that essentially we're going to start acquiring blighted homes <coughs> using eminent domain uh, with these funds. That's, uh, that's not what's in the program. And by the way, uh, your motion and potential approval of this um, recommendation would really just give us the staff the green light to put together a substantial amendment and bring it back to the City Council for ultimate approval so you'll get another crack at the apple if you will or another bite at the apple I should say tonight just is a is a confirmation to the staff saying yes we like the idea please go ahead um, and and we like the idea of moving eight hundred thousand dollars to this to this new allocation and and work out the details and bring it back to us so just to clarify thank you Further discussion, Alderman Janser? And then uh, city manager, then, um, and then the next step would be to await uh, approval from HUD or you know, the, from the government to approve the proposal that we made, correct? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, Councilman, or Alderman Janser. Uh, that is true. We would have to uh, submit the substantial amendment and wait for uh, HUD to essentially acknowledge and agree with it. Keep in mind, this substantial amendment is different than the NDR substantial amendments. Those were competition-based, so this would be a much lower threshold and essentially is, is I, won't, I won't say guaranteed, but much more likely and would not impact uh, any kind of rating or ranking or any of those types of things. This is a, a totally separate program. Uh, that uh, existed before the NDR program. Thank you for that clarification. Further discussion? Further discussion? Call the roll. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Pondragula? Yes. Motion passes. Item number 14 is a gathering <laughs> space criteria and criteria waiting. Moved by Olson. Second. Seconded by Straight. Discussion? Mr. Wolski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I voiced some concerns about this uh, at the committee the whole last week, and, 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 and they largely remain. Uh, um, but I, I, I think at this point, um, I'm going to offer an amendment to the scoring criteria that under uh, economic impact, um, we also consider opportunity cost. Uh, and the develop the, the suitability for development by a private developer uh, on the sites that we're considering. Is there a second to the amendment? 
I'll second it for the discussion. Seconded by Strait. Um, Mr. Uh, Wolski, do you want to expand? Sure. I, you know, whenever we, we basically take a property uh, out of the property pool, the privately owned property pool, uh, we, we diminish its return for the city. Um, and I think in downtown, in these three spaces that we're looking at right now, there are a couple of them that are very suitable for private development if the downtown gathering space does not go on to them. Uh, and, and so I think that should be a criteria when we're considering the economic impact. Uh, because if we do, you know, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30, year, 30 years from now, create that environment where private development flourishes, um, a couple of these sites are, are prime for new development. And, and I think we, we might be uh, really taking a prime location out of the, that, removing that from the potential. So I, I just wanted that considered. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to, can I ask you a question? I, I'm still not sure I understand the economic impact and how it relates to the scoring for this particular project. What is it you're suggesting that it be strengthened or weakened or? I think a, uh, a site that has the potential to be developed by private parties would probably have to be weakened a little bit, but ultimately I think that would be at the discretion of the, uh, the technical review committee. I think I just wanted as one of the factors they consider uh, when they score the economic development portion. Okay, thank you. Alderman Strait. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Alderman Wolski, I appreciate your, your thoughts, and I'll, I'll make sure that we discuss that at our steering committee meeting which will follow our uh, tomorrow night's public uh, gathering uh, meeting. So uh, I'll, I'll see what they have to say about it. Okay, Mr. Mayor, if I may add. Yes, uh, Mr. Wolski. Yep, and, I, and I'm not talking about changing the, the percentages here. I, I think I just want this, this idea evaluated on the overall consideration of the economic impact as well. So it's another little bullet point basically underneath. So you're not suggesting changing the scoring that we talked about the, last week. You're just wanting consideration given when Mr. Strait has his committee meeting. Exactly. Okay. I misunderstood your motion. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Further discussion on the amendment? <coughs> Alderman Sitma. I guess I'm just a tad bit confused if we're not changing the, the percentage breakdowns, but just uh, amending deeper into the economic impact of it. Is that fair Alderman to say? I think I can probably explain. So as we, uh, I'm looking at the criteria here, and, and so we look at uh, public input, 30% of the total score, and, and then there were two little bullet points that were illustrated as things that, that the theoretical gatherings, but the, the criteria would include. Um, connectivity has one little bullet point. <coughs> if we go down to economic impact, there's two bullet points. One is the, the positive financial impacts to existing downtown businesses. Uh, the second bullet point is potential for redevelopment of areas near the sites. Uh, the third bullet point would then be basically the consideration of the suitability of that site to be developed for, by a private developer as well. Thank you. I think that, you know, we, we can just ask Mr. Sitma to do that without going through the exercise of a motion or an amendment, but um, I'm sorry, Mr. Strait. My apologies to Mr. Strait, but not to Mr. <laughs> um, um, so uh, anyways, uh, for their discussion, Alderman Janser. I, I don't necessarily have a problem with uh, um, asking the <laughs> Technical Review Committee to, to take a look at this, but, um, but it strikes me that, you know, we're, we're dealing with something that is um, rather speculative and in the future and, and hard to quantify, you know, to, to try to make a determination and, and rack and stack um, three properties based on what the potential future private developer opportunity might be seems to me to be highly subjective. Um, I don't know how you do that without, you know, knowing what somebody has for a concept, what, you know, what, what they're really going to be doing with the property. And so, you know, to me, any of these properties would have potential for future private development. Which one would be better and how you would categorize them, one, two, and three, I think is problematic. 
Okay, further discussion? Further discussion? Call the roll. Wolski? Yes. Barney? No. Janser? This no. is on the amendment, I might add. I apologize. Janser? Is he next? Yeah, he said no. No. Olson? No. Padrabula? Yes. Zitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Motion amendment passes back to an amended motion on the gathering space criteria. Further discussion on the amended motion. Further discussion on the amended motion. Call the roll. Olson? Yes. Padrabula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Jansen? Yes. Motion passes. That concludes the first committee of the whole meeting. Uh, item number 12 is considered the report of the second committee of the whole meeting. There were 17 items on that agenda. What are the committee's or the council's wishes? Mr. Mayor, I move uh, consent on the 17 items. Okay. Moved and moved by Janser, seconded by Olson. Full 17. Full 17. Yes. Full 14, Mr. Mayor. And 14. Anything else to be pulled? Again, for those of you in the audience, this means that all the items listed up there will be passed as they came out of the committee of the whole, except for items 14 and 17, which will be considered independently. If there's an item up there you wish to uh, talk about, let us know. We'll pull that item for separate consideration. Seeing no one, I'll call the roll on the consent. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Padrabula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Motion passes. Item number 14 is sanitation trucks. <coughs> Award of bids. Move it. Moved by Olson. Second. Seconded by Sitma. Uh, discussion, Alderman Wolski. <coughs> Just uh, going to reiterate my concerns from the committee to all. I'll be opposing this tonight. Okay. Uh, further discussion? Further discussion? Okay. Call the roll. Olson? Yes. Padrabula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Strait? No. Wolski? No. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Motion passes. Item number 17 is the Walmart 2015 abatement request. So moved. Second. Moved to deny. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, please for clerk to approve the recommendation today. Correct. Yes. <laughs> That's why we have an attorney. Um, discussion? Um, is there somebody, did we have a call in or anything for this, Mr. Turnus? Uh, Mr. Mayor, the uh, gentleman would have liked that. He would have liked a little earlier notice, but he pretty much agreed that he was going to just kind of put his efforts into the next level. So we, there's no call and he's not here. Thank you. Further discussion? Call the roll. Sitma? Yes. Strait? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Padrabula? Yes. Motion passes. Item number 13, uh, ordinances on second reading. Wilson. Moved by Olson. Second. Seconded by Janser. Discussion? Any okay. items to be pulled? Again, these items which are up for second reading will be passed as they were passed at last month's meeting. I'll be straight. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm not going to speak to any of these tonight, but uh, I think in the future as we look at the committee of the whole discussion and adding agenda items, I'm going to be, uh, I've been fairly enlightened via our animal committee. I'll, I'll be bringing forth, I think, over the next number of months some changes to some of our existing animal ordinances to uh, try to offer and support our animal control officers. And so I just wanted to kind of speak to that tonight because uh, the our ordinances that are on the books I feel uh, need a thorough review and um, short of asking you to form numerous ad hoc committees uh, I think that some of us have to get a little more assertive to bring some of these issues to, to our body and to openly discuss them and decide uh, if they're still necessary or not or ways of strengthening some. So. Agreed. Thank you, sir. 
Anybody else? Call the roll. <coughs> Olson? Yes. Hodgabula? Yes. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Yeah. Barney? Yes. Dancer? Yes. Motion passes. Um, item number 14 is administrative approvals. <coughs> so moved. Second. Moved by Sitma, seconded by Stray. Discussion? Discussion on administrative approvals. Call the roll. Sitma? Yes. Straight? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Padrigula? Yes. Motion passes. Item 15.1 is the funding update of the North Dakota Port Services Incorporated Intermodal Project. I see Mr. Johnson's in the audience. Uh, is Mr. Sprague here as well? Okay. Um, gentlemen, you want to come forward? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, Alderman. Basically, we're here to uh, report on uh, funding update and, and monies that we uh, have in place here. And with that, I actually brought the gentleman that's putting, putting the deal together, has been working this project for over five years. Uh, we've been up and down, uh, definitely with that, and, and had our uh, circumstances, issues, and, and in putting the, the funding together on a package such as this, being a one and only uh, type of project that exists in the U.S., it has been challenging. So with that, I want to introduce a gentleman by the name of William Sprague. He will do a much better job of uh, introducing himself and, and presenting his resume to you. So, uh, Bill, would you come forward, please? Mr. Sprague, your address, please, for the record. My address, yes. Um, 122 Sagamore Road, Takahoe, New York. Okay, thank you. Um, well, thank, thank you very much for, for having us here today. I'm actually interested in listening to all of the prior discussions and everything that the city is doing in terms of promoting the economic development of the area, because that's what we're trying to do as well. Um, just for a little bit of background, um, I've been in the investment banking and private equity business for over 35 years. I work today for a firm called Headwaters, um, which is based in Denver, and I work out of our New York office. Um, you know, one of the things that I've done uh, as I've gotten up a little farther on in my career is, you know, I focus on projects that I think not only have significant economic and financial benefits, but also ones that benefit the community that, that we're operating in. Um, and as an example, we just finished a, a transaction for um, what is now the first paper pulp mill, a new paper pulp mill in this country um, in 50 years uh, in Starbuck, Washington. Um, there actually is a Starbuck, Washington. Um, it's a $180 million project. Uh, we're taking recycled wheat straw uh, and converting it into paper pulp. Um, we're in the process of building that. We're in the construction phase right now. Um, we've created over 150 jobs during construction, and there'll be over 100 jobs uh, once the facility is up and running uh, late next year. Um, and I use that as an example because that's the reason that I'm still involved in this project. Um, as Greg said, um, I first uh, came to Minot um, in the fall of 2012 uh, when it was a very different economic environment than the one we're operating in today. Uh, it was one driven by energy and, and um, you know, the prospect, I think uh, Mayor Barney, you mentioned um, the Balkan earlier, and uh, you know, it, was a, it was a gateway to the activity that was driving the energy uh, commodity in this marketplace. Um, as a result, it was a very different uh, financing market. Um, we came, as, as many of you know, uh, we came within a couple of weeks of getting that project fully funded. It was $125 million um, funding uh, in the summer of, 19, of 2013, excuse me. Uh, that transaction obviously did not go through. Um, primary reason that the, the investor, which was a um, European uh, infrastructure fund, um, got a little bit concerned about uh, the, the bubbly nature of the energy market, and, and in hindsight, they were, they were, they, they might have actually been right. Um, so what Greg has done, and we've uh, we've helped them with that, um, is completely revise the business model. 
um, to not focus on the energy market, uh, but to focus exclusively on the core pillars of, of the economic community, uh, the economic drivers of this community, which is primarily uh, agriculture uh, and creating a distribution and logistics center that could be the core hub between Chicago and Seattle. Um, we've put together a, a financing for that, which is $80 million, and, and are prepared to move you know, quite expeditiously in order to make that happen. Um, like in any project, um, we run into hurdles. Um, some of them our own making, some of them um, because we've not been able to integrate you know, fully from a communication standpoint with some of the stakeholders in the local community. Um, one of the things that struck me when I first came to Minot was that this was community that was built on communication. Um, it was built on people working together in order to achieve a, a collective objectives. Um, and we understand that not all discussions and not all, with, all business discussions um, consummate in the transaction. Totally understand that. People have different perspectives. They have different objectives. Um, and, and that, you know, outcomes will depend upon those. Um, but, um, but we really have not been able to engage, at least in the last couple of months, in, in a comprehensive discussion with all of the stakeholders. Um, and while, as I said, we can't prejudge those discussions, um, and as I said, we recognize that other people have different objectives. Um, but I think given what I've heard from you all today, and I've heard from many of the stakeholders and constituents over time, is that creating economic development and jobs uh, in this community is important to all of you. Uh, and so uh, we're, we don't have a specific, you know, please do this for us, um, but, but you all are leaders in the community. And you know, what we're asking is that if we could try and get all of the stakeholders, of which you are one, um, you know, in a room to have a comprehensive discussion, to, to, to state openly what the objectives of all the parties are, and to see if there's a way to resolve those, to resolve those issues. If there isn't, there isn't. Um, but to have an open discussion about um, what those objectives are and how a resolution might be moved, might be achieved, seems to be in everybody's interest. Um, the end result would be $80 million invested into this community, uh, the creation of jobs during a construction phase, and the creation of long-term stable jobs outside of just tied to the energy. <coughs> and so, you know, that's really all we're here to do is to solicit your support in trying to create that open discussion, which, as I said, was the hallmark of, of you know, this community when I first came here, and I say I believe it's still the hallmark of this community today. And so with that, I will leave up to questions or if Greg, there's anything